so it's, I mean, it's quite interesting for uh, people that perhaps aren't um, aware of internal politics, perhaps of, of the lived experience community. What you'll find, I, I believe, is that that you'll have certain agendas out there um, and, and certain cliques that want to push their their agendas. Great. You also have others that that kind of tell it how it is, and and they're not offended um, by. They don't get easily offended, and look if if they have to sort of do things in a quite a direct way, then and that makes people listen. And unfortunately, so be it. That's got to be how it's done. Um, you know, I've, I I do this on occasions, and actually, people do reflect and and see it. It sometimes takes that directness for people to understand really what's going on, and and if it has to get to that point, it does have to get to that point. Um, I mean, there's a couple of young la young lads out there that have got a much bigger following than me, um, you know, and I saw them posting stuff about Cheltenham last week, which I thought was just crazy, and, and I called it out, but I'm not going to go attack them because they're youngsters, and, and I don't want to create, you know, further potential psychological issues for them at the end of the day, um, because it it is a minefield out there um so we, there's got to be that balance but, but look at the end of the day if those if the, it, and it goes back to what i said earlier those with agendas and those with more influence than, than we've got aren't listening um and want to want to keep their own agendas i'm afraid that's the way we're going to have to act and i'm not going to make any apologies for 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 being like that i try and be respectful always um others you know who who perhaps are a bit more direct um they, they'd be dealing with stuff themselves you know and um i'll still support them because what they're fundamentally what they say is is exact absolutely spot on and it's got to the point again where they've just been ignored and ignored and ignored gets to a bit of a boiling point and they'll have a bit of a um you know a, a direct sort of spat on twitter and um, fundamentally, I always support the, the nature of those messages. It's just sad it has to get to that. So there is there is the lack of coordination, I think, um, definitely. Um, but hey, I guess I guess that's politics, isn't it? And we're we're kind of we're kind of um, yeah, we're kind of all entrenched in politics in a way, and it's very difficult for very difficult for the lived experience community to actually avoid politics sometimes. Um, I think, and, 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 and a lot of that can affect their own mental being. I think the way I would approach it, you know, if I was some, if I was a person out there looking at some of the posts I write um, and thinking, you know, not too sure about that, I would, I would probably say your best thing is to mute me um, I meet people like that um, because if you just want to focus on other things and that, that's a great thing and I don't want to I don't want to see people further affected um, but equally it's 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 a balancing act of getting the right messages out there when they're kind of getting buried by by other things you know that are kind of hot topic or, or front page news you know what I mean um, I guess I guess we don't want to we don't want important and basic basic issues to be ignored and it you know it goes back to the crime side of when i'm getting ignored now repeatedly i'm in that same boat you know but i'm i'm cheap like i said i'm not going to go wild on twitter and i'm not going to go wild on linkedin i'm just going to be very very matter of fact and and um just just spell it out it, sometimes people just need it spelled out you know if people don't want to listen then some you got to shout you got to shout until you to you are listening um and you know i'll never make any apologies for that so i, I mean i think firstly with education um you know I've, I've i've got a problem with industry funding the main source or the main charity for our education right now i've got a problem with the industry funding our main source of help for disordered gamblers um because you know, all I see from them is, is pats on the back from, from the industry. And that's not right, because it's the same industry that are calling people like me a prohibitionist, which I'm far from it. I've got mates and I've got, you know, I was on a walk with a mate and he was telling me about his bet, you know. So I think firstly, we need to eradicate that um, and stop them peddling um, the responsible gambling macro, which is harmful. 
and that can be easily replaced. Uh, that can be easily solved, I guess, with the levy and an independent process um, to to make sure the funding is not going to to organisations that are aren't really helping in in the grand scheme of things, you know. And when we're talking about our kids getting it, um, when our, and we're talking about education, um, one thing I'll say is that if an organisation is funded by the gambling industry and goes into my child's school, I'll pull my child out. Simple as that. I'm not having that. Um, and I'll make it very clear to the whole, to the you know, to any school that has that sort of education that I don't agree with it. Um, so have independent uh, groups go in that, that are that are assessed, you know, properly assessed by the right uh, channels, um, and including lived experience. So I think lived experience and lived experience pl should play the biggest part in education um, and done so in the right way. And, and I wish all those um, organisations that are coming through the best in doing that. So I think that, that covers sort of education and funding all in one, really, and taking away the funding from the gambling commission, as in, you know, um, you know, any ability for the gambling commission to dish out funds should be gone as well. Um, it shouldn't be allowed. Um, so, uh, you know, I've made it clear about the gambling commission. I've been saying they should be disbanded uh, for a long time. So the gambling commission, the whole of the top tier need to go. Um, I've said that for a long time. Got rid of one, but that's not going to solve things. So, completely reform the gambling commission is is a must. And I think for the best outcome with the gambling review, that would have been my number one start in in, in everything. Just get sort the gambling commission out. Um, same kind of the same with the DCMS. There's no, I don't trust DCMS to run this this whole show as well because they 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 support the gambling commission and. Everyone now knows that the Gambling Commission are useless. So take it away from the DM DCMS as well. That would be another good thing. Um, uh, and, I, and I think probably what, I've, what I said in my first interview with, with, um, with my POV is, is actually um, the rules that are there, just follow them and enforce them. You know, a lot of people say, <clears throat> A lot of people think that the the rules are kind of wishy washy. They're not really. They're 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 all right. They're kind of all right. AML rules. They're there. They the problem is they haven't been enforced by the gambling commission. You know. So when I turn around and say eighty percent of the problem is with the gambling commission, I stand by that because they that they've ignored our evidence. Um, they continue to ignore our evidence. They continue to treat um, disordered gamblers that present their evidence with contempt and make them worse. Um, and yeah, I guess finally would be to, to get an ombudsman in place, um, completely independent of the Gambling Commission, completely independent of an organisation called IBAS, and, 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 and get cases dealt with properly and effectively, not taking years to do, they can take a week to do, you know, I, I could do it in a week, easy, so I don't know why it takes the Gambling Commission two, three years to do. And also, equally as important as the ombudsman is, is not just not forgetting the legacy um, cases as well, which I know that I know that, 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 that they're going to be lobbying to, to make sure happens. You know, it's kind of let's erase all our mistakes from the past. Um, all those people that have been exploited for hundreds of thousands of pounds, you know, we forget about them. So I would very much like to, to see a reasonable time frame. Um, for those legacy cases, certainly the ones that have been brought to the attention of the Gambling Commission. So I would say any case that's been brought to the attention of the Gambling Commission and or the companies should be dealt with under the uh, Ombudsman. Um, and I think that's a very, very important thing. Something I'll be making or uh, so that that will probably be my next sort of um, big push um, for that to happen because if, leg if the legacy is simply er erased, then that's just, um, yeah, it's just something I'm not going to tolerate, really. So I think they're probably the key main elements of, of the, the things I'd like to see change um, right now. Yeah, but just go back to the Gambling Com Commission and marketing, right? So I told the Gambling Commission back in 2018, might have been 2017, about a company called Jumpman Gaming that were bombarding me with text messages and emails. Yeah. I told them about it and their response, 
firstly to me was just unsubscribe. Yeah, that was their response to me. Simple as that. And I'm like, no, I'm not just going to unsubscribe. I want to know what you're going to do about it. Because why should I unsubscribe if if my if my if I'm going to get you know if I'm going to get triggered by this text messages, you know, it's not right. I shouldn't unsubscribe. I shouldn't be getting them. So that was their first answer to me. Second answer was, well, you've never held an account with them, so it's not our problem. And that was quite remarkable. The fact that I was getting bombarded by the worst company, right, called Jumpman with all these texts and, and in emails, and I hadn't even had an account with them, shows you that, that how bad the problem was. But they didn't care, right? Then um, I still, I kept getting these texts from, from Jumpman, even I've told them about the, the company about it. I still getting these emails and texts, and I, and I wrote back to them again, and said, what's going on here? And I got speaking, speaking to the founder, and he's, he's coming up with this smart answer that I clicked on some pop-up, basically, and, and that gave him the right to, to bombard me, which is, is bollocks, basically. But anyway, I left it. And then literally two months ago, I'm getting more texts from Jumpman. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And you, you kind of think to yourself, you go back three years now, if the Gambling Commission had listened to me about those text messages, that I wouldn't still be getting them. But I'm not, I'm not actually concerned about me getting them. I'm concerned about the people that are in the fog of their disordered gambling and their illnesses that get those messages and then get triggered by them you know so that that just gives you a little example of how negligent the gambling commission are um and how negligent companies are um just to listening so yeah at the end of the day i've got a half of a platform i'll probably say i don't get listened to what hope does anyone else have of getting listened to so that i just wanted to share that one with you I think the Gambling Commission are not only negligent, I think they're actually probably corrupt too, simple as that. And if they want to see me, come and see me.